What's up, ladies and gents? Uh, next section, chain rule part two. Uh, we're going to also continue with some absolute value in this one. Um, homework, again, is there on the right. You can figure that out. Um, so what we're going to do... Oops, that's weird. What we're going to do this year is... We're, again, we're going to continue with chain rule, obviously, but we're going to add a little different absolute value derivatives. We didn't really do, I don't think, any absolute value derivatives last year. Um, just to kind of, again, this is um, calculus two theoretically, so we need to get, we need to step up our game a little bit more. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do some absolute value derivatives. It's not that bad. It's again not that bad. Okay, believe me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so we need to do some chain rule. We did some chain rule um, last section where we had repeated applications of it. Again, we had multiple chains where we had to figure it out. All right, so uh, we're going to get some more practice on that right here. Um, again, this 3 is the outside, so if I want to find the derivative, uh, I bring that down, which is then sine squared of 4t, then times the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of 4t. Remember, the inside stays the same. And then times the derivative of the inside, which is times 4. So this is really 12 sine squared of, oops, of 4 oops, 3, um, oof, man, I am going crazy right now, 12 times sine squared of 4t times the cosine of 4t, so that's your y prime, okay, um, this one here, again, the outside is the 4, so this is 4 times all of the garbage that's on the inside to the third times, now, the derivative of the inside which is cosine of uh, let's see cosine of 2x times 2 because I got to do that chain as, as well plus uh, 8x so that is what the inside derivative is um, and that's what the outside is so really that's kind of a crazy looking one but that's what your answer is um, there and I'm gonna leave it that way I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it any smaller I could but it's not gonna, it would be more of a pain in the butt Okay, um, let's do some here, some trig. Um, again, we did this in the last section, but again, we want to refresh our brains. Um, so this is product rule. So this is uv, so u prime is going to be 2 times 2x minus 1 to the first times 2, which is 4 times 2x minus 1. And then we have v prime is cosecant is cosecant cotangent negative so negative I always do that um, cosecant of 2x cotangent of 2x times the 2 so this is really negative 2 out front okay um, so let's put it all together now we get uh, u prime which is 4 times 2x minus 1 times cosecant of 2x minus v prime which is a minus already so that's a plus um actually that's a plus a mi oh man i'm doing the wrong rule here um let's hold on let's do that this should be this is a product rule so that's a be a plus but then it's a minus and then a minus okay we're good there we are good to go minus two times cos i always do that times 2x cotangent of 2x times now the root now times u right there right so times 2x minus 1 squared again I'm not going to clean that up I don't really care too much you can clean it up um, again make sure you have notations though make sure that we know that it's f of x but other than that that's it uh, we're good to go there okay um, so absolute value functions so the trick there is a little bit of a trick and this is actually not too bad so an absolute value of something is equal to the square root of x squared or well we'll say u I guess we're using u here but that's okay so the the absolute value of u is equal to the the uh, square root of u squared then the chain rule just takes over from there okay um, after you substitute so we are going to say this is really the beginning of our u substitution remember we do that when we get into um, trigonometry not trigonometry integrals okay um, when we do um, the bounds the uppers and lower bounds and then um, substituting in 
some function in, inside the integral to make it nice and easy to do. So if I say, okay, the absolute value of u is equal to the absolute value of x squared minus 4. So I'm saying that u is equal to x squared minus 4. Okay, well, all right then, let's go. So now I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to find the derivative of this piece here, which is just the square root of x squared minus 4 squared. All right, so then what do I do um, over dx, okay? Now I want to find the derivative of all of that stuff. Now, I guess you theoretically, um, if you wanted to mess around with it, um, you could say, well, it's just 2x, right? Because the square root of something squared is just the stuff inside, and then the derivative of that is that, um, which kind of is true, but we got to do a little bit of more work. So just, just bear with me here, okay? So let's do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, this is equal to um, x squared minus 4 squared, and all of that is to the 1 half power, right? Because that really is what happens, all right? The square root is really to the 1 half. Then I'm going to say, okay, this is, now I'm going to start getting into um, derivatives, right? So I want to take the derivative of that, which is equal to that. Now I want to use chain rule. And so then I'm going to say, bring the 1 half down. So it's 1 half times x squared minus 4 squared, and all of that is to the negative 1 half, right? Times, now the stuff inside. 2 times x squared minus 4 to the first power, because I brought this down now, times the derivative of the inside peach, peach, which piece, which is just 2x. I don't, I don't need peaches. I don't know why I said peach, but I don't need peaches at all. Okay, then I'm going to start simplifying a little bit and say, okay, well, this and this can go away. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it. As I'm going to bring this all the way down to the bottom. So that's the square root of x squared minus 4 squared with a 2x times x squared minus 4 up on top. Um, yeah, we can do that. That's fine. So then I can say, well, what do we know? We know that this was the absolute value of x minus 4, because really those are the same thing, right? The absolute value of this is equal to the square root of x squared minus 4 squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x times x squared minus 4 over the absolute value of x squared minus 4. All right? Fantastic. That's a little confusing, but we're going to do some more. Okay, um, and you're going to have some practice too, but this is your derivative right there. Because you substituted, really this value really is this, which is equal to this, right? We can plug that back in and go from there. All right, the derivative of absolute value function, so the general rule is we take the u value and we divide it by the absolute value of u times the derivative of u, or u prime, right? So this is what we also refer to as u prime. Okay, so if I say this, I want to write an equation for the line tangent to g of x of this function, absolute value, when x is 2. How do I do that? Well, I first got to find the derivative of g, but why? Because the derivative of g is equal to the slope, which when I write this, I'm, I'm going to write it as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So theoretically, this is our x, which is good. Well, actually, it's going to go right there. Sorry, I don't know why my arrow wasn't good. But I got to plug. Actually, I can. I should plug that in here too, right? So let's do that. So 8 plus 6 is 14. Absolute value 14 is 14. So x equals 2. X equals 2. Y equals 14 and the 14 has got to go into y1. 
So I gotta find m, which is our slope. So I gotta take the derivative of that absolute value of piece. So remember the derivative is up here. It says that I take the top over the absolute value of that original inside stuff times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared plus 3. Then I gotta plug 2 into all of that nonsense to find out my slope. So let's do that. 2 to the third is 8. 8 plus that is 14. That's 14 over square absolute value of 14 is 14. So that's just 1, right? So that doesn't really matter. And then I plug it into here. That's 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. So that's our slope. So I get y minus 14 equals 15 times x minus 2. And did I not do that right? 12, let's see, 4 times 3. Yeah, okay, we're good. Oof, okay. I think the notes that you're going to have on with you, or they say 17 as the slope, but the slope is not 17, the slope is 15, right? 2 to the 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12, times, 12 plus 3 is 15. Okay, so this is our right answer, um, and we are good to go on. I'm kidding, we're done. Ah, fantastic, this is a pretty, pretty awesome stuff here, huh? We're learning a lot, hopefully, this year. Okay, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Deuces, my gooses.